Hi, I am Ivan Stan and I want to talk today about uh, telephoto lenses for the Sony camera. So I have here three lenses and my primary uh, question was comparison between the 200-600 uh, Sony G lens, which is an entry level uh, telephoto, um, and I wanted to compare it to uh, this lens, which is a 400 G Master f2.8, uh, which is a Sony's premium lens and it's a high end lens. There's a huge price difference uh, between them. This one is 2000, this one is $12,000, so you can buy six pieces of that for one of these. Uh, so, um, I did not see a lot of uh, reviews online that were comparing these two because they are not really in the same class. Uh, so, my question was if I already own uh, this lens, uh, will I see any major benefits from switching to the 400 uh, G Master and what those benefits would be and is the price difference uh, justified? And uh, to add uh, to that uh, comparison, uh, I uh, uh, we'll also test uh, this lens. This is a, a Sigma 120 to 300 uh, f2.8. Uh, the problem with this lens is that uh, it's not native Sony. Uh, so because it's not native, it's going to suffer from uh, focusing uh, speed. And uh, it does focus slower than both of these lenses. Uh, but uh, since it is about three times cheaper than the G Master. This is three and a half thousand dollars. We want to see whether it's uh, worth uh, picking uh, this one up. So we want, I want to compare uh, 300 millimeter f2.8 of this lens to 400 millimeter f2.8 on this lens. It's more like for some shorter uh, sports uh, distance. Uh, not really for wildlife, 300 millimeters, maybe for big animals, but uh, for anything smaller, you want the longer reach. So I'm a sports uh, photographer and uh, uh, I do these days mostly uh, racing events, uh, motorcycle and car racing. So I'm going to take these uh, two, 200, 600 and 400 GM. I'm going to take them to um, Yas Marina circuit in Abu Dhabi and uh, I'm going to shoot uh, motorcycle uh, uh, racing. And then I'm going to take uh, board lenses to Dubai, to uh, Dubai Autodrome. And I'm going to also shoot the motorcycle racing and car racing. Uh, and uh, then I'm going to compare the images and also the focusing accuracy um, and, uh, and see whether uh, the G Master justifies its uh, price tag. a few details about the 400 G Master. Uh, first, surprisingly light lens, so you can hand hold this easily, unless you are very, very weak. Uh, you can hand hold it and you can shoot uh, without uh, tripod or monopod and they get pretty stable shots. Um, the lens is still pretty huge because of this uh, front glass element and the, the huge uh, um, hood. Uh, and uh, it doesn't really fit into any of my uh, camera bags, so it has its own case, uh, which if you're traveling, um, you might want to consider. It's not easy to carry an additional case just for this lens. Uh, there is no classic uh, cover for the uh, glass element. Instead, it's this, uh, just a cap, which you take off, and uh, the huge glass element is exposed. This is basically the largest glass element I have seen on, on any lens. Actually, I have seen it mounted on uh, gimbals such as the Ronin S. So you can actually do that if you want, if you're crazy enough. 
uh, once I compared the images from the 400G master to the 200-600G lens, um, is that this lens has produced sharper image with a better uh, saturation and contrast. Uh, the effect that you get with the f2.8 with a, a very um, you know uh, focused uh, uh, image and a clear background separation uh, the images just for me look much nicer on this lens and noticeably uh, like immediately once you compare them put them one next to the other uh, you will you will be able to tell the difference um, so uh, from uh, the quality perspective, this is definitely, definitely much better lens than the 200-600. Uh, it also focuses, it also focuses faster. This is like the fastest focusing lens I have ever used. Uh, the focus is fast and precise. Um, I think I had like 90 to 95 percent uh, hit ratio, uh, so everything was in focus. I tried it on uh, A9 and on A7R3 and uh, both of these cameras uh, had very good success of uh, focusing with this lens, better than the 200-600. Um, now we have uh, realized that this is going to produce a much better uh, image, nicer image, sharper, uh, with nicer colors than the 200-600 lens. Once we have uh, made that conclusion, the question is, is the price tag difference justified? And um, I would have to say that in my case, when I present these two images to the client, uh, they do notice the difference, but they are not really ready to pay much more for the images created with this uh, much more expensive lens. So uh, this costs six times more than this, but I can only charge maybe 20% more uh, making the images with this more expensive lens. Yes, I'm going to produce nicer images, but uh, in my case, people don't, just don't want to pay uh, too much uh, over the images that are created with this. So that is one uh, important thing uh, to consider. Uh, you have to um, make sure that your clients are ready to pay the premium price for the premium images. <coughs> so thanks to uh, Sony Middle East, I'm going to have uh, one more lens uh, to try in uh, this comparison. And that's this monster here. This is the 600 uh, G Master F4. And just to compare the sizes, I'm gonna put, this is the uh, Sigma 300 F2.8. And uh, this is the Sony 200 600 uh, with the lens hood on. So just, yeah, you can see what is the size difference. So I'm going to put this aside. Uh, let me just say a few words about uh, the 600 uh, G Master. So um, based on my observations in the past two weeks, uh, this uh, seems to be exactly the same lens as the 400 G Master, just a little bit longer to get that uh, 600 millimeter focal length. Uh, even the, the front glass element seems to be of the same size. Uh, the weight is also similar. This is a little bit heavier, uh, but uh, uh, yes, uh, the glass inside seems to be the same. So are the focus uh, motors. Um, as for uh, the image quality, um, it seems to be uh, approximately uh, the same. And um, uh, this is just uh, intended primary for uh, longer uh, distances, if you want to get a shot over the longer distance, uh, or um, if you're shooting at a smaller target, such as a bird or uh, any small uh, wildlife specimen. For my purpose, I'm, I'm doing sport photography mostly. Uh, at the racetrack, such as the car racing or the motorcycle racing. So uh, I definitely uh, 
find 400 uh, millimeter more uh, uh, versatile than the 600 millimeter. Uh, however, this did have uh, its uh, uses. My uh, uh, thoughts after using uh, these lenses for uh, for two weeks. So let's let's uh, uh, let's uh, let's compare the uh, focusing speeds of these lenses. The 600 G Master and the 400 G Master uh, seem to have the uh, fastest and the most precise uh, focus. Um, they almost never miss. So I would say 95% uh, uh, of situations I had uh, everything in perfect focus. Uh, if we compare that to the 200-600, um, the focus was a bit slower on this lens uh, and a bit less precise, but not by a huge margin. Uh, it's noticeable though. And the worst of them all was the Sigma 120-300 f2.8 uh, on the MC11 converter. Of course, it's not a native lens, so that's to be expected. Uh, this one, I would say in the fast moving targets, I had about 50% hit rate. With this, I would say 95 and with the, with the Sony 200-600, I would say 85 to 90% hit rate. So this is by far the worst if you're shooting fast targets. If you're shooting slow, slower targets, I still uh, had a pretty good result with, uh, with uh, the Sigma. Uh, and uh, for slower moving targets with uh, any of the native lenses, I would say 99% uh, hit rate. Uh, Gonna take a few shots. Click, 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 click. I'm still here, off roading now. Uh, as for the image quality, okay, so I've tested uh, the Sigma versus the, the Sony and both of these glasses have produced really nice images. So this is also 2.8, this is f4, the 400G Master is f2.8 and uh, uh, the image quality is a pretty comparable on these uh, three lenses, the 600G Master, the 400G Master and the Sigma 120-300 f2.8. The image quality is comparable. Uh, if we take a look at the 200-600, to 600, this is now f6. Uh, so you're gonna notice the difference. Uh, the image quality is gonna be worse on this. Uh, you're not gonna have that uh, uh, blurriness of the background, the, the bokeh. Uh, it's it's gonna everything is gonna be not everything, but uh, the the depth of field is gonna be much uh, much bigger. Um, so. Um, you can clearly notice uh, the difference on, on this lens. Now, for most people that I showed the images to, um, they, uh, they notice the difference, uh, they notice the quality uh, difference, and uh, they, pref they prefer the uh, 2.8 or f4 uh, uh, compared to the f6. Uh, however, uh, most people did not really uh, Notice the huge difference. Like I'm, I'm doing photography all the time, so I could notice the big difference. But most people, they just don't uh, register. Uh, they're looking at the object that is in focus, uh, and they don't pay that much attention to the blurry background. Um, that being said, now if we look at an uh, image that is in focus, 
if we say a look at a car or a motorcycle or an animal, um, the 400 G-Master, the 600 G-Master and the Sigma have produced a better looking image. Uh, the image that has uh, uh, more sharpness, uh, more clarity and more uh, uh, like, uh, color, color clarity compared to the 200-600. I would place this like a, a, as an entry-level lens but with a lot of flexibility and a lot of uh, uh, focusing power. So very, very usable lens, just not on the same level as uh, the other three. However, it's gonna give, it's gonna give a result because it is uh, uh, fast focusing, it's precise, uh, and uh, it's a zoom 200 to 600, so it gives you a lot of flexibility. So you'll be able to get really good images with uh, this, but with the other three, you're gonna be able to get uh, higher quality images with a Sigma, you're going to lose the focusing power. Uh, and uh, with the G Masters, you're going to lose a lot of money from your pocket. So you have to decide uh, what, is, uh, what is your priority. Now, um, who can I uh, re recommend these lenses to? Um, now, if, if, if you don't look at your finances, if you don't really care about finances, and you're looking for absolutely the best, on your Sony camera, just go for the 400 or 600 G Master. They are amazing, amazing lenses. And I'm, I was amazed with the images that they produced. Uh, I did not uh, have any better image than with the, the, the G Master lenses. Uh, the Sigma is also really good, really, really good in the image quality, but that uh, focusing power is missing and uh, it's, uh, it is going to annoy, annoy you. Uh, it does cost uh, about uh, four times less uh, than this, so that is uh, something to consider. Now, uh, another thing to consider uh, on these lenses is um, the weight and the size. So, if you look at a Sigma, it's not that big, but it's really heavy. This is like four kilograms. Uh, the, 600 GMS, I think, is around 3 kilograms, so this is lighter than this. Uh, this is also quite light, and, and it's also, um, if you remove the lens hood, it is way, way smaller. It's the, the 300 Sigma and the, the Sony are about the same size, but this is lighter. Um, so, let's say that you're traveling, and you need to consider the weight and the size of the, the lenses. You will not have any problem carrying this. It's uh, relatively easy to pack and it's relatively light. So this is, has a, this is a good to go if you're traveling. The Sigma is not big, but it's heavier. So you can notice that uh, uh, difference between these two, okay? So this is also good to go, but you need to be a bit stronger to carry it around. Now, as for uh, the 400 and 600 G Master, the weight, I had no problem holding them and using them um, for hours. So the weight, like, uh, I, feel, I feel more weight in this smaller Sigma than in this. Uh, but the problem is the size. Um, if you're traveling, uh, carrying this around uh, might be a problem. It doesn't really fit into any standard uh, bag. So it comes with a suitcase. I will put this aside, and here is the suitcase. So it's a big thingy. So you have to uh, you have to take that into consideration that um, you will need to take that with you, or find some way to carry this without uh, the without the bag. Uh, let me take the lens hood off so you can see the size of it, so I'm going to put that aside. So, even with the lens hood off, it's, uh, it's pretty big. So the 400 is a little bit shorter, so it's like till here. Okay, I don't have the 400 here with me now, so I cannot directly compare them, but the 400 is a bit longer than the 200-600. Yeah, so it's about here. Anyhow, both 400 and 600 could not fit into any of my bags, and I have big bags. 
So I can fit every other lens, but I cannot fit 400 and 600. So I have to carry them in their own uh, cases. If uh, you're staying in a city or uh, going somewhere nearby and uh, you have a, a car that uh, you can fit these bags in, it's no problem. But once uh, you start, uh, let's say, hiking or uh, going into a wilderness, you have to uh, think how you're going to carry this. Uh, <clears throat> so one thing to, to consider is the, the weight of the lenses. Uh, for the, my use, I'm, I'm located inside the city and uh, I'm doing uh, sports photography. I have no problems transporting uh, these lenses around in my car in, uh, in their own bags. Um, but if I would uh, to do some wildlife photography and I want to travel uh, around the world, then the transportation might become a problem. Um, okay, so um, when we, uh, it comes to uh, commercial uh, use of uh, these lenses, as I'm a commercial photographer uh, and uh, I uh, do sports photography for a living, um, what uh, is my opinion on um, on uh, uh, usability of uh, these lenses. So it is very clear that you're gonna be able to produce uh, the best image with the, the G Master lens, the 400 or 600. Uh, but when it comes to actually selling uh, the photos, so I have been making photos with this, and I have been making photos with this. And people will prefer the looks of the photos made with the G Master lens. However, uh, my clients were not ready to pay more for uh, these photos. Um, however, I was able to get more sales uh, with this lens. This lens brings you more sales, but it doesn't increase uh, the price that you put on those sales. So that is also one thing to consider. Somebody who has a high profile clients might be able to charge more just by having uh, this lens. Uh, in my case, I, it was easier for me to sell the photos, but uh, uh, I couldn't price them higher. Um, would I buy these lenses? All four, okay. So after, I've been using the Sigma for a while, I've been using the 200-600 for a while, and I had the, the G Masters for about two weeks. So my conclusion after using uh, these lenses, would I uh, buy any of these uh, if, uh, if I had to start from the scratch? And uh, so if you look at the 120 to 300 uh, Sigma f2.8, uh, if you are shooting uh, not just sports, but if you're using the lenses for close-ups, for portraits, for a medium range uh, um, sports, uh, for the sports that are not that fast, I can definitely uh, recommend uh, this lens because the Sony does not have anything in that range, 100 to 300. Sony has 70 to 200, and I compared this lens to the Sony G Master 70 to 200, and this lens just destroyed it in image quality. Uh, native will always focus better, but uh, for slower moving sports, I would pick this over the 70 200 uh, G Master lens. Uh, it, is, it was also for me better than the 100 400 in the image quality. Again, 100 to 400 has a uh, better focusing. Um, so, um, if you don't need that perfect focusing and fast focusing, if uh, things are not moving that fast, I, I could recommend the Sigma 120 to 300. Uh, now the Sony 200 to 600 at its price point at about two thousand dollars. This is yeah. This I can definitely recommend this lens to anybody who is shooting uh, in a longer range. So the, the uh, it's uh, not heavy. It's not uh, huge. Uh, and doesn't cost too much, so it's a no-brainer. If you need a, a long lens, uh, this is a, a way to go. Start with this. Now, as for the G Masters, would I uh, buy them? If the money was no issue, I would definitely go uh, with, the, with the G Master lens. I would buy the 400 first, and I would use that always, and I would forget about this. I would just go for the 400 G Master. Um, and I would struggle more to get into the proper position 
so that I could use that fixed focal length of 400 millimeters, uh, I would uh, uh, disregard uh, the flexibility of the zoom. Uh, that's how good these images made with this uh, lens are. Uh, the main concern for me is, uh, is the price point. It is just uh, so much more expensive than everything else. So the, the 600 G Master world price is about $13,000. 400 G Master is $12,000. Uh, this is $2,000. So you can buy six of these for one of these. And uh, this is about uh, 3500 I think. So you can still buy three and a half of these for one of these. Um, so, uh, um, I, I looking at the, the, how much uh, revenue this can generate you, um, it would, it would uh, be um, uh, low value for money, uh, whereas this would be the highest value for money. And this would be pretty high, but in this order. The best value for money is 200, 600, then the Sigma, then the it's only gym masters. If, uh, if you don't uh, mind to spend uh, more money or if you're doing this for a hobby and you just want the best possible images, uh, then this is the, the first, uh, the best option. So you just have to figure out what you're gonna use it for. If you want to use it uh, for yourself or you're trying to make money uh, from uh, the lens or if you have the high uh, profile clients, then uh, this, uh, this might pay itself quickly. Um, so, once you figure it out, you will know which one to take. Okay, so that was, uh, that was my opinion on uh, these four lenses. Uh, of course, today I don't have the 400 uh, G Master with me, so I'll be, I'm just showing you these three. And once again, uh, I have to uh, just say one more thing about the 600 G Master. I really like uh, uh, the huge size of it. It just uh, attracts a lot of attention uh, wherever you go. The 400 is noticeable, but not as much as uh, this one. This one is just a monster. And here is my electric unicycle. I want to mount the GoPro inside the lens hood. You can follow what I'm doing. And off we go. So, uh, uh, the front glass element uh, got cracked, so that's going to be a problem to fix. Luckily, the camera is not mine, so this was like, phew. <laughs> okay, so that was my, uh, my uh, opinion, my review on uh, these lenses, and uh, I hope uh, it uh, helped you and that you learned uh, something new today. Until next time, bye.